Hey, how you doing? We're gonna, today we're going to talk about the Saturn V rocket 160th scale that I printed with the files from the Amphioxus. Rocket set up upstairs. Let's go have a look. Let's begin on the first stage, specifically the bottom of the first stage, which contains the five F1 engines. Inside is thrust structure. On the underside, what we see is the feed lines, pumps, and load bearing structures for each of the five F1 engines, each engine developing a million and a half pounds of thrust. The outer four engines here are actually gimbaled so they can steer the rocket, especially as it's clearing the tower, steered away from the tower. Inside these fairings, you see these yellow pieces. They're actually retro rockets that fire at staging. They fire forward in the forward direction so they pull the first stage away from the second stage when staging occurs. Above this is the massive bulkhead with the feed lines. This bulkhead serves as the lower end of the kerosene tank and the lines passing through here are actually the lines that carry the liquid oxygen from the tank above. So everything down in this space here is thrust structure and this fits down inside and attaches the lines to the engines. Next is the kerosene tank. Kerosene tank is baffled. Kerosene was the fuel used for the first stage only. above this section, the upper bulkhead, and the inner tank section. Notice that the outside is ribbed. Wherever you see a smooth surface on the Saturn V, it indicates that they're using the tank inner wall along the outer skin of the rocket as structure. So wherever there is no tank, they put this ribbing in to create the additional strength in the rocket. Then the liquid oxygen tank, five feed lines on the bottom, baffling inside, setting on top here. And lastly, the upper bulkhead. Now this is where the first stage ends and the second stage begins. This is an inner stage collar. You see here, Ullage motors after the first stage separates and before the engines on the second stage light, these solid propellant motors fire for about four seconds to settle the propellants in the second stage tank. Now, base of the second stage has five J2 engines. are also gimbaled. There's the bulkhead, lower bulkhead, with the liquid hydrogen tank. Now, this is the rest of the second stage. Baffling for the liquid oxygen tank and the upper bulkhead for the liquid hydrogen tank. Lastly, on stage two, bulkhead, upper bulkhead for the liquid oxygen tank. This fairing fits over the rocket motor for the third stage. And on to the third stage. Here, single J2 motor, like the five that were at the bottom of the second stage, and a liquid hydrogen tank immediately above it. Then the liquid oxygen tank. Notice the 
helium tanks inside there that are used to pressurize. The upper bulkhead for the liquid oxygen tank. The remaining pieces are what we call the Apollo spacecraft, so not actually part of the Saturn V vehicle. The lunar module, the command module, the service module, and the space spacecraft lunar module adapter, and the escape tower. Starting with the lunar module, you see is the descent stage. Here's the ascent stage. So once landed on the moon, the descent stage serves as the platform for the ascent stage, and the ascent stage is where the astronauts are. The lunar module, legs fold. and fits into the SLA, or Spacecraft Lunar Module Adapter. The limb sitting inside the adapter, you can see the legs actually extend down a little bit below. You can see the descent engine. The knees fold up around the service module. SPS engine, various tanks, instrument panel, piece fits over, command module and the escape tower and protective cover. This stays on the rocket until after the second stage is lit and then it is ejected. I remember the Apollo program as a boy being fascinated by it and as a kid building models and rockets and wishing that I could build a Saturn V rocket, but not really finding any kits that were satisfactory. I think uh, what's made this rocket special is the fact that it's 3D printed. There's no paint in this model. And I'm grateful to the Amphioxus for posting the files necessary to print this beautiful, beautiful rocket.